Hello. We've finally done it. We've made it to the end of the Shadow of Hakuho, celebrating you show number 43 through 45. Solemn Salt Salute. Hakuho! Hello and welcome to an amazing episode of the Dohyo. We have finally done it. After literally years and years of preparation, we have made it to the end of the Shadow of Hakuho, the alternate universe where Hakuho never existed. So we go through each one of his Yusho and award it to who we think would have been the deserving Rikishi in that tournament. Well, we did it. We've been through all these episodes and now we are here to Yusho number 43 through 45. <laughs> So for those of you who have just happened upon this episode and have no idea what I'm talking about, you can check out the Shadow of Hakuho playlist. You can start back on episode 7. There are so many ways to get caught up. We've done two recaps so far at about the third marks on the way through. And after this, there will be a gigantic recap episode where I recap the entire project into one tight, neat little package, so you can check that out too. Also, there's going to be one about my methodology, so if you have any questions about how this came up with all of this, please drop me a note in the comments, and I would love to answer that question for you in a future episode. And now, one last time, it's time to dive deeper than we've ever dove in before into the shadow of Hakuo. Time for you show number 43. November 2019, Hakuho wins with a 14-1 record. Second place June Yusho goes to Komasubi Asanoyama and Maigashira 10 Shodai at 11-4. One win down at 10-5, Maigashira 12 Takanosho and Maigashira 13 Kagiyaki. There were five tied at 9-6 including Ozeki Takakesho and Komasubi Abi. I give this one to Asanoyama in a definite maybe. Okay, so number 43 was very tricky, but we managed to come to a conclusion that definitely favored one wrestler over the other. We had a lot of wheat and chaff that we could sort of separate out very, very early, because the Sanyaku was not that great in this tournament. We had one Yokozuna and two Ozeki just gone. So that only left us with Hakuo, who ended up winning the tournament, and then just a lot of mediocrity in the Sanyaku. And surprisingly, for Komasubi, quick sidebar. Yes, you heard me right. In this tournament, for Komasubi. Now, in the tournament before, we had the thing where we sometimes have, where we have two very solid Komasubi and then some Magashira underneath who clearly deserve promotion. Now, it has always been explained to me that we don't start talking about like creating extra Komasubi and Sekiwake slots until we get to like 11 wins. And here we are with a 9 and a 10. What's up with that? Well, one school of thought is that, hey, Hokuto Fuji clearly deserved a promotion with a 9 and 6 at that top Maegashira rank, and then Asanoyama had a better tournament facing the basically exact same people as Hokuto Fuji. He got 10 wins, so you're telling me both of them aren't ready to be Komasubi? And that's, you know, I, I can get behind that. But what I really think is, the previous tournament, we had two very hurt Yokozuna, Hakuho and Kakuryu, who gave up four Kinboshi. Now, for those of you who don't know, if you are a Maigashira who beats a Yokozuna, that's called a Kimboshi, or a Gold Star win, and then you get a bonus on every paycheck for the rest of your career. So, I think just a little bit of that four Komasubi spread was, we had two Yokozuna they weren't sure were in quite fighting shape, and they didn't want to give up extra Kimboshi if they didn't have to. So if you've ever criticized me for saying, oh, there need to be more Komasubi slots, this tournament, this is why I think I can happen. Quick sidebar. So yes, the Sanyaku did not do very well. In fact, we only had one Sanyaku member other than Hakuho get double-digit wins, Asa no Yama. We'll get to him in a second. Now, I've been hard on the Sanyaku, but there wasn't a lot to cheer about in the Maigashira ranks either. 
from Maegashiro, one through nine, the best record was eight and seven. So we're not seeing anyone really setting the world on fire here until we get down to Shodai, down at Maegashira 10. Now, he ended up with a slice of the Jun Yu show, and he ended up getting promoted a little down the stretch and ended up beating Asano Yama on the last day. <laughs> Now you might think, all right, Amagashira 10 probably didn't face a whole lot of hard people. He didn't, but this was the beginning of boss level Shodai. That amazing seven Basho stretch where whatever deal Shodai made with whatever deity, he was imbued with the strength of Ozeki Sumo and it started in this specific tournament. So if you're telling me boss Shodai started in this tournament, you could convince me he had a championship in him. Why? Because he had one so quickly after this. And not only that, Asanoyama, his number one rival, had a Fusen win, a rare day one Fusen win against Kakuryu, who went Kyujo in that brief amount of time between the schedule being announced and the tournament starting. So that is the pro Shodai. So what is the con Shodai argument? Well, it's that he only faced one Sanyaku member, and it was Asanoyama on the very last day to sort of see if he could get a share of the Junyu show. In that tournament, he faced eight Maegashira is 10 or below, and he only went 6 and 2 against them, so that doesn't necessarily tell me he's fighting at a higher level of sumo for the entire tournament. In fact, Shodai had been hanging out up in the joy for a good long time, and he had gotten a 3 and 12 the previous tournament, including 0 and 6 versus the Sanyaku, and that was why he was wrestling so low. Maegashira 10 is the second lowest Maegashira rank he has ever held, the only exception being his initial Makauchi debut. So of course, he was very underranked, he should have done well down there. And if we look at Shodai's top wins in this tournament, it was... Komasubi Asanoyama, but then it was also Maegashira 8 Shohozan and Maegashira 6 Enho. Those were the quality wins. Then we look at Asanoyama. Yes, he did get the Fusen win at the beginning, but it's not like Shodai faced Kakuryu anyway. He had to face Hakuho, so there's a very good chance he would have picked up an extra win there. Shodai was his only Maegashira lost. He ended up beating Taka Keisho and Abi, who were the other sort of Sanyaku contenders at 9 and 6. So yeah, this one was close, but sorry, Shodai. I'm giving this one to Asanoyama, in a definite maybe. Other interesting milestones from this tournament. This was Wakataka Kage's Makauchi debut, and he had a fascinating one. He ended up going 4-0, uh, and o, getting hurt in the fourth win, and immediately having to go Kyujo with a 4-0 and o record. I don't think I've ever seen anyone be undefeated four days in and then Kyujo. And of course, no one ever heard from Wakataka Kage ever again. And sadly, this was also the tournament where Ichi Nojo ended up going Kyujo for the whole thing, dropping down into Juryo for about the better part of a year. And also, this was the tournament where Tomakaze, the very, very promising young Rikishi, was shooting his way up the Banzage, all the way up at Maegashira 3, ended up having a horrible fall off the Dohyo, hurt his knee. He is still working his way back from that injury and is just now reaching the Makusha de Joy. Hope to see him back up in the Sekatori ranks very soon. Are you ready for you show number 44? March 2020. Hakuho wins with a 13 and 2 record. Second place, Jun Yusho goes to Yokozuna Kakaryu and Maegashira 9 Takanosho with a 12 and 3 record. One win below at 11 and 4, Sekiwake Asanoyama and Maegashira 13 Aoyama. One win below at 10 and 5, Maegashira 3 Mitakeyumi. I give this one to Kakuryu in a strong case. Now I know we all remember this one if you watch this one. This one was the Ghost Basho, yes. The one where they allowed no spectators because of the coronavirus. And yes, if you saw this one, you remember this one. Now we're also at a sort of interesting place in sumo history because we had two Basho ago was the U show we were just talking about, U show number 43, in November. Then, January of 2020 was the Tokushoryu surprise. So right after that, we come back with Ghost Basho. I mean, as we remember, the Basho after this was canceled. So as weird and creepy as the Ghost Basho was, it was so much better than the non-Basho we had that May. 
This basho is also noticeable because this is the very first Hakuho Yusho I covered on the dojo. Yes, we are now into the part of sumo history that I was starting to cover live. So of course, you can check out my amazing predictions and marvel at how much the video and audio has improved since a couple years ago. And if you go back and you look at those episodes, the thing I was noticing at the time, as were a lot of people, this was the first basho I had ever seen Hakuho win where he seemed sort of diminished. Normally, Hakuho made it a point of pride to defeat his opponent with the sort of sumo that was most honorable to defeat that opponent. If he was a belt sumo wrestler, he was going to beat you on the belt. If you were a pusher thruster, he was going to beat you that way. If you would cartoon nonsense sumo, he would wait you out. But yes, this was the first tournament where I saw him give up Kinboshi that he sort of deserved to lose. And specifically in this tournament, there was a very memorable one where Onosho just straight up beat him. This one was also very noticeable because we only had one Ozeki. Takakeisho, and they had to create the very rare rank of Yokozuna Ozeki, uh, which Kakuryu ended up fulfilling, uh, to sort of balance out the Bonsuke. Now, you don't need to have any Yokozuna, but you need to have two Ozeki to make sure the Bonsuke is balanced, so if there are not two Ozeki, one of the Yokozuna sort of gets to slide down and do some double duty. Also notable in this tournament, it is the debut of Kota Nawaka, all the way down there at the bottom of the Makuchi Bonsuke, and this tournament was also peak Enho and the only tournament where he faced a Yokozuna. And unfortunately, he sort of got his butt handed to him by Kakuryu in this tournament. Now, I gave this one to Kakuryu in a strong case. There are some other contenders up there, but they are pretty easy to dismiss if we think about them. Number one, Aoyama, the Blue Mountain. He ended up with a Day 5 Fusen win over Surugisho, so there's an extra win you can't necessarily lock in there. He ended up getting promoted down the stretch. He ended up beating Matakeyumi, but then losing to Hakuho and Takanosho and Ishiura. His first 11 opponents were Magashira 10 or lower, and that plus the fact he only beat Kakuryu once out of 21 times in his entire career, so even if he had made it to somehow get to a playoff with Kakuryu, he probably would have lost. So, Aoyama, get out of here. Asano Yama, he comes up here again, now finishing up his Ozeki run. He had, of course, an interesting Ozeki run. It wasn't a traditional sort of three-tournament 33 win. He sort of proved his worth by like, hey, I'll just get 10 or 11 four times in a row. And that seemed to be okay with everyone. Uh, that and the fact that I think I mentioned there was only one Ozeki at this time. So Asano Yama was already a win behind, he ended up getting a Fusen win, and he lost to Kakuryu in the tournament. That's enough for me to say, sorry Asano Yama, you were solid, but not quite in this Yusho race. Now Takanosho started 9-3 and three and then finished really strong at the end once he got promoted, lost to Asano Yama, beat Sekiwake Shodai. So he was tested a little bit down the stretch, but not so much I think he was going to be in the Yusho race. Did not face either Yokozuna, so that tells me if he had ended up getting promoted down the stretch, he likely would have had another loss somewhere. And that leaves us with Kakuryu. Now, if you watch this tournament, it sort of felt right that we ended up with two Yokozuna fighting it out on the final day. And Kakuryu in this tournament had a few stumbles early, but finished completely strong, losing only to Hakuho down the stretch. So that tells me, Kakuryu, you've got this one in a strong case. Yes, it's time. The ticks have clocked. The counts have downed. You show number 45. July 2021. Hakuho wins with a Zensho Yusho. Second place, Jun Yusho goes to Ozeki Terunofuji with a 14-1 record. Next closest at 12-3 is Maegashira 11, Kotonowaka. I gave this one to Terunofuji in a lock. Ah, nice to end on a lock. Good. Clean. This one came down to Hakuho's final match. Two 14 and 0 Rikishi on the final day. It was the most satisfying sumo moment of my sumo fandom. Uh, there's not a lot you can say about this one. I was incredibly happy that his final Yusho was not the Ghost Basho. I thought he really deserved to lift the cup in front of a live, if diminished, in numbers audience, but not in spirit.
Uh, I'm sorry if this one's a little anticlimactic, but there was really no case for anyone other than Teru no Fuji. Teru no Fuji tore his way through this tournament. He tore through this tournament like he had dinner reservations and didn't want to be late. Other than Hakuho, he didn't really have many tough matches on the slate. The Sanyaku had a couple 8 and 7s in there, but nothing that was really a challenge there. Kota Nawaka got a 12 and 3. He was the next closest. His best wins were Maigashira 8 and Maigashira 7. And then you have Tamawashi below him at 11 and 4. That was the closest we got. There is no doubt here, in the absence of Hakuho, Terunofuji would have won this tournament. So, yeah. Like, not to be anticlimactic, but we're done. There ain't going to be any more Hakuho Yusho. I'm, I'm positive about this. Uh, he, he's going to be getting the haircut. He's already changed his name. Things are in motion. Cards have been printed. So, yeah, I want to thank you who have been here to watch this entire weird thought experiment sort of unfold. And if you've been here from the beginning or if this is your very first, it doesn't matter. That's the beauty of this project. It's going to be here until YouTube ends up, you know, being destroyed in the various sort of uh, end of world scenarios we're going to come up with at some point. That got dark. Stay tuned, we are going to have our bolder -er predictions and our quick strikes coming up for the July Basho, so don't miss that. Stay safe, stay strong, stay healthy, and I will see you next time on the Dohyo. Yeah.